I can get a little louder than that. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Excellent, excellent. Um, my name is Brian Howard. I'm the town manager here in the town of Randolph. Proud graduate of Randolph High School and class of 1985. And when I was going to Randolph High during the, uh, during the summer, I worked here as a custodian. So I've gone from literally picking the gum off of the chairs in the back to introducing the governor 30 years later. So you never know your, your trajectory in life. So to the young people here, any, any road is possible. So I'm here today, and I would like to recognize, if they just want to stand for a quick moment, our Randolph School Committee. So if you want to stand, the Randolph Town Council. <laughs> Behind me is our state delegation. If they would like to stand for a moment, Senators Brady and Timothy, and Representatives Ears and Driscoll. We have a number, a number of state officials here, uh, in particular the team from DESE, so let's hear it for them. It's truly an honor to be here as we recognize how state and local partnerships can work together to produce positive outcomes for our school children. Thanks to the DESE grants, funds from the Healy and Driscoll administration, with support of our state delegation, Randolph has been able to create high quality, evidence-based reading and literacy materials for our students. As reported by the Boston Globe, <laughs> as reported by the Boston Globe just, uh, just last month, Randolph has seen a substantial progress among its students after shifting to a structured reading program. So I certainly want to thank our school administration, our teachers, we can't do it without you, and our young people here who uh, bring their hard work every day here to school. At this time, it is my honor to bring forward a champion of public education in this great state of Massachusetts, Governor Mora Hill. Well, good afternoon. It is really a treat for us to be here. And um, thank you so much, Brian, for your, uh, your welcome and for um, kicking us off here today. We're really excited about this announcement in particular. And it's great to be in Randolph when Lieutenant Governor Driscoll and I showed up. We were greeted by Randolph High and the incredible marching band, three songs, all you know, chosen with care, and that, wasn't that a great way to start? Super, super talented, these kids, you know? And we were, we were telling them, um, you know, we're a team and an administration um, with incredibly supportive partners in the legislature and at the local level who are about making opportunity real for kids. And for the kids outside who are in high school, it's about making sure we're leaning into all the pathways career pathways, vocational school, the programming that they're getting in traditional schools, thinking about their careers and making sure that we collectively as a state are doing everything we can to open doors for them. And they work so hard. We commended them, you know, for their teamwork um, and for the discipline it takes to be in a band and, and do that work. And it was just, a, it was incredibly poignant and inspiring for us. And, what a great way to kick off this, this visit, which has been fantastic. So to town manager Howard, to our town council president, our school committee chair, colleagues in the legislature, as well as our great team at DESE um, and our secretary of education, Dr. Tutwiler, who you'll hear from in just a moment. We also want to recognize our DESE commissioner, Jeff Riley, and our commissioner of uh, early education and child care, Amy Kershaw, who are here today. Um, the DESE team has worked hard to elevate literacy in Massachusetts, led by Director of Literacy and Humanities, Catherine Tarka. The community here at Young Elementary School and in Randolph Public Schools our superintendent, Thea Sovell, principal Sarah Hosmer, 
the staff, the teachers, many of whom we had a chance to bump into during our visits. Thank you for welcoming us into your classrooms. Um, I think that what we saw today was really uh, incredible. Our student leaders who greeted us in the hallway and showed us around the classrooms demonstrated such poise and confidence, which is really, really terrific and also a reflection of community and community support. The parents, the teachers, the staff, right? All of you guys who give you the skills to do what you need to do and to be out there proud in the world. And then we went into the classrooms. It was amazing to go into these classrooms and see the teaching that we're talking about, the teaching that we believe in, that is gonna give every child in the state the very best preparation. And then to move on to a, a group of second graders who know a lot more about dinosaurs than I'll ever begin to know. <laughs> But it's pretty impressive because what it showed is that they had just finished a lesson on dinosaurs, but they retained all of that. So it's not just learning how to read, it's the comprehension that goes along with it. So I think that for Kim and me and Pat to be able to see in just a few moments in two different classrooms, the right kinds of teaching, the right kinds of, of pedagogy, you know, being practiced, being implemented, and to see the results, first graders reading to us perfectly, it was incredible. So, you know, I just want to say thank you. Uh, thank you to this community, and thank you for putting the time in and the investment in our young people. Giving our youngest students a strong start is the most important thing that we can do for their futures, for our state's future. And what we see here at Young Elementary is not just a strong start. It's the solution to a nationwide problem in early literacy. And it's a solution that we can and we will bring to every classroom in Massachusetts. The reason is clear. Across this country and even here in our great state, there are just too many students who are not learning to read well, or as well as we know they're capable of. And that reflects a lot of things that we need to work on, that we need to address. It was certainly made worse by the pandemic. We talk about learning loss. We talk about some of what happened and the toll on our students, on our educators. It also reflects the fact that too many districts in Massachusetts aren't using the right up-to-date and evidence-based reading instruction. So the real problem is not that our students are failing. The problem is that we're failing them. But we're going to change that, and we're excited about it because we have the power working together to change that. Now, the good news is we know what works. And we came to Randolph, and I want all of you children to hear this. The reason we came to your school is because your school is doing it right. Your educators, your teachers, your staff, the people who love you. So we like to show off good things when it's happening in the, in the state, okay? And we chose to come here to Young Elementary to celebrate what is good and to celebrate what is possible. I want you to know that, okay? We also um, want you to know, all of you, that we're working hard to make sure and we want to make sure that every classroom, every teacher, every child in our state has access to the very best resources and strategies. And we have a plan to make that happen. It's called Literacy Launch, Reading Success from Age 3 through Grade 3. It's a five-year plan, and it is the most comprehensive response to the literacy challenge offered by any state in the country. It's going to require investing in our schools, our teachers, and our students. And that's what we proposed in the budget we filed just a couple of weeks ago. $30 million we propose in year one as a commitment to addressing early literacy. Now, that's in addition to making sure that we are fully funding the Student Opportunity Act and getting record support for our schools. It also goes hand in hand with another program we announced a couple of weeks ago, Gateway to Pre-K, the plan to get every four-year-old in Massachusetts access to high-quality, affordable preschool classroom. 
starting with our gateway cities. Reading instruction is a big part of what makes a high quality pre-K classroom. So we're going to invest in pre-K and early literacy instruction together. It's no secret that this is a challenging budget year. Federal relief has gone away and we know that our school districts are feeling that too. So we have to manage our spending carefully. But that means we have to prioritize, right? When there's less to work with, we need to be smart and prioritize where we're gonna spend money. Housing and childcare that's affordable, including to educators. Roads that are safe and trains and buses that are reliable. And schools, our schools, making sure that they have the resources they need to help every child reach their potential from preschool all the way through. That's the best investment that we can make because it's an investment in our future. Our future business owners, scientists, leaders, teachers, doctors, nurses, and so much more. The future of our state. Now we know we can do this because we have a track record here in Massachusetts. Do you know how old Massachusetts is gonna be next year? How old? 50. How old do you think I am? <laughs> Don't answer. <laughs> Massachusetts is gonna be 250 years old. It's not as old as the dinosaurs. We learned that they were millions, millions of years old. But Massachusetts is old. We're also special though. We're home. Do you know that we're home to the first school in the entire United States of America? Yeah, first school right here in Massachusetts. We're home to the first public library in America. Yeah. We're home to the first public park. Yeah. So we're used to doing this. We know how important schools are. Because a long time ago, people decided that education was the pathway. So we're not doing anything different today. We've done this before. We know how important education is. We know how important these investments are. And that's why we are excited to be here today to announce, to stand together with all the partners it's gonna take to get this done and to make sure that not only are we home to the first public school, the first library, also the first in literacy. And <laughs> And with that, I welcome our Secretary of Education Dr. Pat Tutwiler. Good afternoon. All right, town manager got everybody warmed up. That is wonderful. Again, my name is Pat Tutwiler and I'm the Secretary of Education. Thrilled to be here uh, at Young Elementary School this afternoon to celebrate uh, this really important investment. I want to start by thanking uh, the leadership uh, at this school, Sarah Hosmer, the principal who's standing right there. Uh, a leader who I know well, we go back, uh, and whose leadership and commitment to young people I admire. Thank you for, for hosting us today. And I'll say the same to the superintendent, Tia Sovell. Sovell is right there. Also an individual I've known for a long time and whose leadership uh, I admire. Uh, it really takes leadership to make the kinds of transitions that we saw here today at Young Elementary School to evidence-based literacy strategies. And we're here to celebrate that. That's what Literacy Launch is all about, celebrating those who have taken the steps in the right direction toward evidence-based strategies and also bringing along and making opportunities available for those who have not quite yet. Because with Literacy Launch, we're going to permanently transform early literacy learning in the Commonwealth. You heard the governor's passion and commitment to meeting that need, and I share that passion and commitment. She's backing that up in this administration's budget recommendation, and you heard it, a $30 million uh, investment in the first year, uh, which will expand access to high quality professional development, coaching, high quality materials, 
and high quality systems of support. Everything that we know, research says, is the best way to meet student need in this space. Literacy Launch will make professional, develop, professional development available for free for all districts with K-3 educators. We'll also include a broad scale support for early childhood educators who support literacy and preschool. On top of the professional development offering, our goal is to support approximately 45 school districts in the first year of this investment, transitioning to a strong evidence-based literacy program, some of whom uh, have not yet adopted high quality curriculum material, and some that have, but have not yet supported effective implementation strategies. In addition to those grants, uh, we plan to have a separate opportunity to allow districts to adopt Apple Seeds, a DESE developed free evidence-based literacy curriculum to supplement less comprehensive literacy curricular materials that some districts are using. Literacy Launch will also update approval criteria and accelerate review timelines for teacher education programs to require evidence-based early literacy training for future educators because our teachers need to be taught these important evidence-based strategies. We're prioritizing early literacy because of the simple yet profound reality that establishing early literacy is not only about uh, a foundation for the remainder of a student's education, but it becomes a foundational marker for a student's life. We owe it to our students to get this right. With Literacy Launch, we'll be making a down payment on a generational change in Massachusetts. With an infusion of high quality professional development and support to transitioning to evidence-based materials, we can permanently improve how Massachusetts students learn to read now and for years to come. And with that, it is my great honor because I've known her for so long and she's really a mentor to me when I was a superintendent. Uh, it's, yeah. That's for Dave. Did she say wow? <laughs> She's amazing. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Tia Stovell, the superintendent of the Randolph Folk School. Before I say anything, I just have to say I am always proud of Randolph, but today I feel super proud. These kids were amazing. And someone said, like, they asked, like, who, did they know who we were? The governor actually asked, do you know who we are? And they said, we're experts. And I thought, experts? Like, this is amazing to me. So they literally were the experts in the room today. They sat like they were celebrities who were used to, like, all this attention and did not skip a beat. So I am so glad. And I want to thank all of you for being here today and the governor um, for pushing her literacy. Um, Pro, her literacy launch project. So I'm gonna start and say we are honored and proud to gather today at the Young Elementary School with all of our special guests to recognize the hard work and early success in Randolph for our commitment for every child's right to read. Four years ago, we were faced with an alarming realization that nearly two thirds of our students were reading below grade level. The opportunity gaps were wide for our students as were the knowledge, skill, and system gaps prevalent for educators and leaders. We knew the problem wasn't that our students couldn't learn to read. The problem was that the tools and methods we were using to teach reading did not work for most of our students. We also knew this wasn't an issue of will. Our educators, our leaders, and our students were showing up every day doing everything they knew and had been taught to do. Instead, we identified that our educators and leaders lack the science-based knowledge, skills, and materials necessary to provide the literacy instruction all students require and deserve. Randolph educators, under the leadership of our assistant superintendent, Dr. Amy Hartley Madison, <laughs> they created a literacy action plan um, that was committing to a strong vision, goals, and action steps. And at the same time that we felt urgent about this work, we recognized and committed to balancing this urgency with time. 
time to learn and adjust practices and to achieve so short-term goals focused towards one end and our ultimate goal of 80% or more of our students reading at or above benchmark by June of 2027. The following are the high leverage action steps that have contributed to our early success. Leaning into learning from experts in the field, including Dr. Chris Parker at Ideal Consulting and Hill for Literacy, increasing our knowledge and skills in foundational science-based literacy instruction, and building key internal data assessment and progress monitoring systems. Selecting a variety of high quality instructional materials that are designated or designed with research based practices and that match priorities and needs specific to our district, our data, and our students. Engaging in DESE sponsored grants, academies, networks, institutes, and programs deepening our work, and establishing key partnerships with 1 8. Springboard Collaborative, and Ignite Reading, to name a few. I am proud to share that in year two of our Literacy Action Plan, we are on target to meet all of our goals. Right. Our early success would not be possible without the support of the Randolph School Committee, who worked closely with town leadership to allocate important funding. Yet our work is not done and challenges persist. Adequately staffing interventions required to meet the needs of students reading below and well below grade level in both budget prohibitive, is both budget prohibitive and absolutely necessary. Highly trained interventionists need to be allocated based on data to ensure that students reading below grade level make the ambitious growth necessary to close gaps. With a budget already stretched thin, additional funding sources are required. In addition, every year we hire new teachers who are graduating from university and college teacher preparation programs without proper instruction in science-based approaches to teach reading. Placing the responsibility on school districts to then teach licensed educators how to teach reading. It's lost time, overwhelming for new teachers, and expensive. Mandating higher education teacher preparation programs to offer courses on science-based reading instruction is critical. Our commitment in Randolph and across the state to each child's right to read is not without plateaus and dips along the way. Thankfully, our will persists and we will do the work. A representation of Team RPS is here today, students, caregivers, educators, coaches, and leaders. Please stand and raise your hand. Help me recognize the folks that are doing this work every day. They know this is important and worth it. They do the work and they never give up. And to all of you here today visiting Randolph Public Schools that work locally or across the state and have the opportunity to impact our schools and our future, thank you for knowing this is important and what every child deserves. Thank you for doing the work and thank you for never giving up on every child's right to read. Now, I'm very happy to introduce Husseinia Ventura to speak to you. Husseinia is an RPS community member, an active member of the YES PTO, YES is Young Elementary School, um, and her most important role is mom to a young school first grader. She is a great example of a parent partner. Please welcome Husseinia Ventura. <laughs> so those are my little ones over there. <laughs> um, first of all, I wanted to start by saying what an honor it is to be able to share my experience as a parent with the education journey of my daughter so far here in Randolph. So I'll give you a little bit of background before I get started. Um, we moved to Randolph five years ago from Boston. Um, 
when we moved here, it was time for my oldest to go to pre-K. We found a private one here in Randolph, um, and they laid out a great academic foundation for her. As her pre-K graduation was approaching, the big question was, where is she going to go to kindergarten? Personally, I went to private schools my whole life, so naturally, that was my first option I was exploring. As I spoke to other parents and friends, so many had great things to say about the elementary school system of Randolph, in particular, the young elementary school. They talked about how great the teachers were, how dedicated they were to the students, the resources they had, and how it felt like a true community. So my husband and I decided, hey, why not? Let's try it for one year, and if we're not happy with kindergarten, we're going to change her to private school. So as you can see, I'm standing here. <laughs> so we decided not to switch her, and my daughter is a happy, thriving first grader at the young. Now, it has not been all color roses for us. We have had our challenges throughout, but I have never felt alone or at a loss because of the partnership with the teachers. From the moment we attended kindergarten orientation, Mrs. Dos Santos made my daughter feel welcome and comfortable with her. She made it clear to my husband and I that my daughter's success was from the partnership we would build together, and she was true to her word. She let me know when things were going great, and she let me know when things weren't. I was able to write to her with questions on how could I do things differently at home, if I was heading in the right direction, if she had tips for me, you named it, and I asked her a lot. <laughs> because remember, for our little ones, learning is also an emotional journey. And it certainly was an emotional one for mine. Mrs. Dos Santos not only partnered with me, but also with my daughter's provider, as we all help her transition to a formal school system. First grade has not been any different. Mrs. Kelly, over there with my little ones, <laughs> has been amazing with partnering with us. Again, communicating what is going well, what could use a bit more work, giving us tips and games that make learning fun and not a chore. When we are practicing sight work, she tells me, mommy, I already know that. I learned it at school. And it makes me smile from ear to ear. Now the sass, I'm still getting used to it, but we'll talk about that. <laughs> and, um, it just makes me feel so happy to see her loving to learn. My daughter will also be joining Springboard, which is an after-school reading program for extra focus on her reading. And over the summer, we plan to attend the discovery program offered by Randolph to continue her early learning journey. And what is even more jaw-dropping for me is that the experience is not only unique to me, in my child, but it's also an experience that I hear from so many other parents here. So all is to say, and it may be a cliche, but it does take a village. And I'm super thankful for the village I have found at the young school and in Randolph as a whole. My youngest is getting ready to graduate pre-K and enter kindergarten in September. And we have a little bit of butterflies in our stomach but we're glad to not be questioning where she will be attending because she will be joining her big sister here at the young. So thank you all, the teachers and staff, Mrs. Hosmer, um, Randolph Superintendent, all of you, and thank you Governor Healy for supporting and investing in the future of our kids. As a parent, it is greatly appreciated and needed. So thank you everyone. Um, and now it's my honor to welcome Governor Healy back to the podium. Well, uh, Jacinta, thank you so much for sharing the story of, of your kids' success.